Hello everyone, my name is Yeva Kasparova. I am daughter and interpreter of Sergei Kasparov, a grandmaster from Belarus. So I'm talking on his behalf and I'm just committing his words. Uh, for several years already he has been practicing a lot the Scandinavian defense. That's why in this video lesson we'll make an introduction to the studying of this opening. To attract your attention, uh, we would say that the Scandinavian defense can be considered an improved version of the Karakan defense. Let's try to compare pawn structures, as pieces are, can move and they are quite flexible compared to the pawns which are quite static. So both in the Scandinavian defense and in the Karakan, black has a pawn on c6 and there is no pawn on d file while white have the pawn on d4 and there is nothing on e file. If we look at the Karakan structure, then the only difference is that there is a white pawn put on um, h5 and the black pawn uh, on h6. I would say that it's more to the white's benefit because in the middle game uh, the g pawn can run forward till g4 and then g5 and so to say hook the h6 one. Uh, besides in the ending one can also have some superiority uh, in case that there will be only black squared bishops left on the board because the uh, h6 pawn is fixed on the black square. So this black pawn could be a potential weakness and as you see the structures are quite similar that's why the ideas of these two openings will also be similar. As is known white has several uh, options how to avoid the Karakan, the classical line of Karakan defense. For instance, e4, c6, d4, d5, take, and then white plays c4, which is called a uh, penef attack and it leads to the position similar to Queen's Gambit. Or even um, a more modest and safer system is in case of bishop d3 as a fourth white move. And they don't need to play c2, c4, it's sufficient just to develop the knight, uh, the bishop to d3 and to continue development. This is exchange variation and this line is quite often used by relatively weak chess players. Then if the classical main line of Karakan is quite studied and black has a lot of arguments there, uh, it can make sense to go for the advanced variation which is e4, c6, d4 and then e5 and there uh, white at least has a uh, space advantage and all other things being equal e5 quite cramps the opponent. Well finally uh, white doesn't have to play uh, d4 as a second move so it can be e4 c6 and then knight c3 d5 knight f3 which is called the two knights system. Uh, well this variation does not uh, put a lot of obstacles for black but still they'll have to work and think creatively over the board. Some people also uh, opt for quite peculiar uh, variants like third move f3 or As a second move, one can play d3, d5, and knight d2. So as you see, there are a lot of options to avoid the main line of Karakan defense. Compared to that, in case of the Scandinavian defense, e4, d5, 
most of those avoidance lines are not possible at all or they are not satisfactory for uh, white. Well, it's quite obvious then the options similar or identical to pen of attack or exchange variations don't work because on d5 black will take with a queen uh, or with a knight but not with a pawn. If one tries to continue by analogy with the two knights variation, knight c3, uh, then uh, the continuation d x e4, knight x e4. This leads to the classical line of Kerrigan, but also black has an extra tempo because they are saving a move on c6. For example, d6, d4, knight f6, and then later black can play c5 and uh, equalize the position. But even more promising is second move d4, and black grasps space. And again, uh, he or she didn't spend the tempo on c6. Finally, if one tries to move the pawn to e5 by analogy to the advanced variation, then c5 is quite good because um, again uh, there was no tempo spent on c6. And also, uh, we shall notice that the Scandinavian defense is not that well studied as the Kerrigan. That's why, uh, especially one can feel it in the Blitz or Rapid tournaments, uh, the openings are not so well prepared. So, now let's consider a typical Scandinavian game. e4, g5, Knight f6, knight f3, c6. Well, here the knight on c3 uh, stays in front of the pawn, and thus one cannot put the pawns on c4 and d4, as it would be uh, nice for white. So this is the main uh, drawback of the white pawn structure. Knight d5. Uh, nowadays it. Uh, is likely to be the most uh, fashionable line. Knight bd7. Knight tries to escape from the exchange because, as we all know, exchanges are more favorable to the one who lacks space to the more cramped side. Knight d3 uh, with the uh, obvious idea to develop the bishop to f4 where from it can attack the opponent's queen. Knight b6, knight f4, queen d7. Well, this move might uh, seem strange for you, uh, why, because why to put the queen in front of the own bishop? However, there is logic in this move, because the queen is simultaneously attacking the pawn on d4, and besides, it also wants to jump to g4. h3. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this idea was uh, firstly introduced by Viriel Bologan in the game against Sergei Tivikov, a well-known expert of the Scandinavian defense. The idea is not to allow the opponent to simplify the position, at the cost of the d4 pawn. Knight c4, bishop c4, queen d4. And one has to accept the sacrifice, otherwise the position is too bad. Bishop f3, castling, bishop f5, castling. So, black stands passively, but he has no weaknesses and extra pawn in the center. So if he survives, 
till the ending it will ensure the victory. 94 equation takes Please uh, pay attention to the pawns which try to stay uh, at the seventh rank as long as possible so that not to create uh, any weaknesses. Rook d7. A really nice idea of Sergei Tivikov which puts the question to the whole white strategy. B4 A5 And finally the rook which had been passive so far is activated Take, take, bishop g7 And gradually black pieces come into play And hence the Moldavian Grandmaster who is playing white uh, has to search for the compensation for the pawn, which he is gradually losing. Let's see what happens next. h4, rook a3, h5, f5, queen c4, and rook g3. Well, you won't often see such a transfer of rook when there are a lot of pieces on the board, right? And the backward pawn e6 really does not decorate the black's position, but so far it's safely protected by the bishop. So objectively we have more or less parity on the board. Uh, here uh, bishop f6 is an interesting option but in the game there was bishop takes h6 rook f e1 at sight it's quite a healthy move as the rook is centralized but in fact it was a time trouble mistake so one should have played King f2, g3, and uh, white stands slightly better. So in the game was rook f e1, bishop g7, right? <laughs> and g5, uh, black returns the favor. Instead, in case of cool blooded. Queen f7, f7, change, and black still has an extra pawn. To take by the rook uh, would have been even worse because of this, this, and it's much better for black. Okay, so we go back to the text. G5, take, exchange, queen f7. Well, here, uh, Sergei, who was playing black, has an extra pawn. Uh, however, black is doing really active, and this compensates the slight lack of the material. Then bishop f8, f4. Um, I think the more precise option was rook g6. And then let's see what happens. But it's equality everywhere. Coming back, f4, queen f3 take, take, rook d5. Uh, this is strictly the only move, otherwise the d pawn uh, could, could show itself because it's the best pawn.
नेक्स्ट टेंच रुक दीवान एंड ग्रेडुअली वन इज रनिंग आउट ऑफ स्ट्रेजल्स रिसोर्सेस वेल वन इज रनिंग आउट ऑफ रिसोर्सेस टू फाइट विथ देन रुक बी सेवन exchanges less and less pieces on the board well here the draw was agreed and we can state then after the opening the black exchanges chances were more preferable were better but uh, he didn't manage to uh, gain a real benefit out of that okay let's move to the next game now Uh, this one was played in the Netherlands in 2015. Sergey is playing black again. Take c3. C6. Bishop f4. So unlike Nimitnichi, uh, the majority of the opponents still do not dare to sacrifice the central pawn. Queen d7, exchange, e6. Black establishes the maximal control over the pawn d5. The bishop on c8 becomes passive, but is just for some time. And besides, after the exchanges on b6, the a file is opened for the rook. Instead of e6, uh, the move queen g4 is not that good, because white escapes the exchange by queen e3, for example. I tried this playing against a strong German girl in 2013 in Apolda. So coming back to the text. A6 ED The situation is very unclear. The square E1 is controlled by the bishop and it is not possible to give check by the rook. Bishop C4 and pawn A2 are in danger. And anyway, um, after the game, when we were discussing, uh, my opponent, whose elo was around 2,400, uh, he came to me and told, uh, well, during the preparation for the game, I, didn't, I couldn't find anything better than perpetual check. Bishop d3. This is a creative pawn sacrifice, which is a patent of the Ukrainian grandmaster Yuri Soldovinchenko. More often they play bishop b3 when people don't want to sacrifice the pawn. In the game was played bishop d3. And here black has several possibilities. Uh, one of them is banal take, rook takes a2. c3, check. So, The black king is deprived of a castling right now, but this is not too bad because there is no mate or something inside. And meanwhile, black is still possessing the material advantage. H3, D6. So black is gradually dressing the defense line. Queen e3. And here actually black has a lot of good moves, but uh, I chose mm, not that good. h5. One could have also played rook e8 or b5, queen d8, bishop f8, but okay, my option was h5. Then follows good move rook e2. 
Now please pay attention, the open e file is fully controlled by several white pieces. However, all the penetration squares, all the entry squares, uh, which are uh, specified with yellow color now, they all are controlled by black. B6. Uh, I play, um, sorry, Baskin played uh, rook e6, but there was also a move bishop h4, which would be stronger and put in some pressure on the opponent. Okay, so rook e6, queen a7, which is kind of a reminder that black also has some counter arguments. Here start really puzzling complications, but if black plays right, then he is out of danger. This is the only move. Only move again. And here uh, I could have tried to fight for a victory by taking gf. and black is somewhat better. But coming back, I, uh, I played queen a1. Only move. Imitating some aggressive ideas, but of course Sergei saw that he cannot avoid the draw. Check. Check. So the draw was agreed here, and we can state that in this line, Black's chances are practically not lower. Thanks for your attention.